enough where the Y's are grouped together. But in order for us to get X minus something to the second power, if you notice here, it's kind of like part of a quadratic. So we want to complete the square to get the rest of the quadratic so we can solve it and figure out what it would look like in terms of X minus H to the second power. Who can recall how do we complete the square? How do we complete the square? Avery? for completing a square. So if you forgot that, write it on your paper. Remember that standard notation of a quadratic is uh, y equals ax squared plus bx plus b. So I'm always taking the b, the coefficient of that curve, okay? Go ahead, Avery. I'm sorry to interrupt. Uh, so then you take negative 4 divided by 2 and then Right, so that would get us to four. And once I add to the left side, I have to add to the right side because this is an, e an equation, right? They're equal to each other, so I want to keep this down. Sure. Right, and now we need to do the same thing with the Y. Okay, so I'm completing the square for the X's, and now I want to complete the square for the Y. What would that look like? What would it be? And if you remember from the other day, we talked about uh, this process. Um, remember, we're making a perfect square trinomial so that it's easy, easy for us to factor it. Tessa, I think I saw your hand. Um, yeah. Which one would be? All right, so we would take six divided by two and square it. That would be three squared or plus nine. Okay, again, I'm packing it on the right side because I have to balance. And now I have a perfect square trinomial and a perfect square trinomial. So it should be very easy for us to factor at this point. What is x squared minus 4x plus 4 factor? Aurora? It factors into x minus 2 squared. Great. And can you... Um, do that side for us too. The y. Well, y side factors into x plus 3 squared. And now we have to simplify this. We have a negative 9 and a positive 9 to cancel. We end up with 4. So now from here, we can identify the center point and the radius. Okay, so the center point would be 2, comma, be careful with this. Remember, minus needs to be in there. So Positive, that means we have a negative 3. And our radius, remember, is this number with squared. So we have to take the square root. Get 2. And then I would just plot this on for my head. Start with the center. Raise it down. Okay. That's it. Good. And then the radius. I'm going to count out 2 to the right, 2 up, 2 left, and 2 down, and then do my absolute best. Trying to make my circle as round as possible. Okay, so this was a uh, 10.8. Yes. 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 Oh, yes. 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 Any questions? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yes. Coming back to you. I like to see it. Yes. 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 All right, so um, our whole goal for today is like talking about angles and arcs. Uh, in particular, we're talking about central angle and then the arcs that they're creating. Um, a central angle of a circle has its vertex at the center, and its sides contain two of the circle's radii. Remember we talked the other day that a circle has infinitely many radii for diameter. Okay, so we're just talking about that uh, they contain two of the circle's radii. And the sum of the circle central angle total is 60. So we're basically saying that if we have a circle, here's the center. Say this is A, B, and C. You have, in this particular case, two central angles because you would have um, B, A, C, 
and also this central angle that is, um, you know, opposite of it, the AC going in the other direction. Uh, it also means that we would have two arcs. We have arc, this little curve, AC, right here. And we also do have arc, uh, B, B going in the other direction. Okay. Usually they give us more than two uh, central angles to identify, so um, you know, it's easier to identify and fall on. So basically we know that this is the circle, it totals 360 degrees. Um, and all we're exploring today are the different types of arc lengths and using uh, sorry, type, and using that information to find the uh, value. So for doing this as well, right? We did um, take the 60 minus 50 first and then we did that uh, 90. We can add together 50 and 90 and then that total. However you decide to do it is your business. Um, at this point, they most likely want to see an algebraic equation of some sort. So if you start with this, you know, um, you'll balance. I'm just asking you to talk to know that those uh, angle magnitudes can be expressed in expression, okay? It could go beyond the past, it could be like 3x uh, minus 12 or something like that, okay? So, uh, something that you would want to set up is this operating agreement and show your work and talk to God and do all that good stuff. And we get to my agreement, by the way, okay? Um, I just wanted to talk about the different types of work uh, that will run into and ask you to identify. So we can have a minor arc, basically something that is less than 180, a semicircle, which at this point you probably all know is half equal 180, so this is half the circle. And then we have things that are major arcs that are greater than 180. So can somebody name a minor arc in our example from before? Who can name a minor arc? Something that is less than one. Kyla? Angle, angle, angle. Yeah, that's possible. M O X. So we would say arc, and it's a curved line over the uh, letters. Can somebody name another one? Arc? Okay. Oh, I'm sorry, say it nice loud. N O P, yeah. Mark N O P. Can somebody name a semicircle? Can anybody see a semicircle? I see a lot of you with your camera off. Please uh, turn them off. Anybody in here see a semicircle? No, there's no semi semicircle here. What about a major arc? So we 
would say, you can just say MP as well. Um, or we could, and that goes for these two. We don't necessarily always have to include the center because we're not talking about an angle, we're talking about the arc itself. So we can just say M, uh, P, right? I'm gonna go back here too and pick up that subtract. Let's just call it M, M, M. And very similar to like triangles and all that other good stuff that we talked about along the way. Um, they can be either in the same circle or if you have a congruent circle, you need to make the same shape, right? It doesn't have the same direction. Adjacent arc, remember when you were younger, you talked about an uh, angle. And we had intersecting, uh, you know, when we had parallel lines that were intersected, right? Um, we can have now adjacent arc. So MN and MP would be adjacent each other okay so this arc I'm gonna use a little squiggly and this arc are adjacent because they are next to each other okay um, and then we have a theorem 10.1 arc addition postulate it's going to make a lot of sense to you because it is really logical uh, the sum of the arc formed by two adjacent arcs is the sum of the two adjacent arcs Okay, very confusing when we read it, but it's basically saying that MP, so R MP equals the sum of MN plus N. Okay, so MP equals the arc of MN plus the arc of MP. That's all it's saying. Okay, and it's called the theorem. Um, Breathe, you would just say that this is a measure of the Okay? 
very simple concept. So let's do this one together, but you do it by yourself and then we'll I'll show you what I wrote down. But RV is the diameter. That's super important um, of circle two. Identify each arc as a major arc, minor arc, or semicircle, and find a treasure. All I did was I made a list, and you might want to do that as like I wrote major arc, minor arc, and semicircles, and then I just listed the arcs underneath it with its measure. Um, that might be a